our session now. So um, I want to welcome everybody here today uh, who is joining us in this amazing event to hear from our, our friends, our family in India. My name is Reva Joshi, and I am a board member with uh, the Mahatma Gandhi Canadian Foundation and also with IGIMP Canada, and along with my dear newly adopted brother, Anuj, uh, we will be the uh, co-hosts for the event today. Um, I want to begin by doing something that we do here in Canada, which is called a land acknowledgement. In these days when we are all uh, participating from all over the world, it's still important to recognize who we are, where we are, and who has made it possible for us to be in the places that we inhabit. Uh, I am speaking to you today from what is called Treaty 6 territory uh, in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. It is the traditional home of the Cree, the Métis, the Dene, the Soto, and many other Indigenous peoples who have for centuries made this place uh, a, a home and a welcoming place for others. Um, we acknowledge all of the ancestors who have made it possible for us to be here. And uh, we give great thanks uh, for the uh, continued uh, stewardship that they give to this land so that we can continue to be here. Um, I want to just say a couple of words and then I'm going to, to pass it on to Anuj. I, I wanted to, uh, as I said, just sort of, first of all, say thank you and welcome to everybody who has, has already been participating in this project. Um, some might say, why, why are there so many Gandhian organizations involved? And I think it's because Gandhiji taught us that the essence of Ahimsa is finding the connection among all beings. And in that spirit, I wanted to share with you a very short poem that I wrote uh, a, a few years ago. I, I just call it We. We, a presumption of collectivity, a need for solidarity, a sense of community, a search for shared humanity. So it's to further those goals that are in that poem, collectivity, solidarity, community, and shared humanity that the four major Gandhian organizations in Canada, the Gandhi Peace Council, the Gandhi Peace Festival, the Mahatma Gandhi Canadian Foundation, and, the, and IGINP Canada have partnered with two other um, wonderful organizations, which are Gandhian in spirit, if not in name, Facilitators for Social Change and Dharma in Motion. We have, for the past three weeks, been working on this campaign, not to bring charity to India, but to express our solidarity with our family, our friends who are there, who are working on the front lines and who are doing everything that they possibly can to both prevent COVID from spreading further and to give relief to those who are suffering um, so I want to just tell you what today's program will be shortly, and then I will turn it over to Anuj. So in a second, um, uh, Anuj will, will, uh, take this on and he'll tell you what he's going to be doing. We will then follow that with a very short video that our dear, dear friend, John Majay has done. And I want to give all thanks to John Majay who has spent, um, who's been awake all night basically uh, finishing off this video so that we could use it. He's uh, an amazing, amazing uh, uh, part of our, our uh, Jai Jagat family. Um, following the video, um, Raj Gopal, Rajaji will speak. And uh, following that, our, our dear Shraddha Van will take over for a little while and uh, facilitate a, a bit of a conversation with a number of people who are working on the front line so that we can hear directly from them. 
Uh, and then following that, um, our most wonderful Jill will uh, speak just for a few minutes. Um, and then we're going to have a little bit of a break for, for some more music, which Jen Majay has curated for us. Um, following that, we'd like to have about a half an hour or so uh, available for questions. So we've already got one. Thank you so much from our, our, for, our, uh, for that question from our, our Swiss friends. Um, but others of you, if you could put into the chat the questions that you have, then we will make sure that Anuj and I to, um, to share those with others. And uh, we'll have some responses to those questions. Um, if we have the time, there's a few other folks that may speak uh, towards the end. And then uh, we'll just conclude by um, what will be 1.30 Eastern in, uh, in Canada or um, 1.30 Eastern time, basically. So that's the run of the day. And with that, I am going to um, turn it over to uh, Anuj Bhai. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Reuben. Um, greetings, Namaskar uh, from Mi'kma'ki, the indigenous, indigenous land of Mi'kmaq people, uh, uh, now known as Nova Scotia. Um, we all, thanks for coming uh, and joining us here. Uh, we all know um, what every one of us are going through. Um, this event is for uh, India, but we know uh, the world is suffering. Uh, the news from Brazil, the news from Peru, the South Africa, now Nepal. Um, it's, uh, it, it feels like sometimes, uh, you know, a time of no hope, uh, but we are fighting it. Uh, there's so many of us, you know, among the volunteers in India and the Ekta Parishad you'll hear from are suffering personally in their family members. Some of them have lost lives. Um, to start with, uh, I would just like to uh, assemble together and, and uh, ask your permission to uh, lead us into a small 30 second silent prayer uh, and keep all of us uh, in our thoughts. Thank you. नमस्कार साथियों अब हम 30 सेकंड का मौन रखने चाहते हैं हमारे उन साथियों के लिए जिन्होंने कोविड में चुनौतियां झेली अपनी जान दी जय जय We will now um, watch the video um, that we have prepared to give you a glimpse of um, the situation on the ground. Thank you. Yes. So uh, I was requested by Jill Ben to very briefly uh, highlight my motivation towards making this video. Um, amongst other things, I have been involved in working with Jajabit for a couple of years now and with uh, the Gandhian movements. So it was just a privilege for me to get to uh, make something that could put forward the situation. Uh, the other thing is that a couple of days back, a friend of mine died. I myself have recovered, recovered from COVID and it's just been heartbreak after heartbreak and suffering after suffering. And that motivated me to try to do something that could uh, present a situation. And especially in the villages, it's very difficult because uh, there's so much lack of equipment, lack of hospitals, lack of supplies. So uh, yeah, I mean, the cases that are being reported are nowhere close to what's the actual number because it's very tough for even governments to get to these places. Uh, 
but luckily the ekta team is doing a fantastic work in the grassroots level and i hope that this film can help showcase that jai jai bhim अभी कोरोना के इस कठिन दौर पे लोगों को बहुत परेशानियों का सामना करना पड़ रहा है अभी क्योंकि लोग गांव के लोग कहीं बाहर जा नहीं पा रहे हैं आसपास कोई मजदूरी की व्यवस्था नहीं है ऐसे में जीवन चलाना बहुत मुश्किल हो रहा है बच्चों को कहीं खाना खाना खिलाने में बहुत दिक्कतें आ रही है सर मुझे कोई सहारा नहीं मेरी धर्म पत्नी खत्म हो चुकी है टूटू सो घर है सो तपरिया में डरी रख खाना पीना का कोई साधन नहीं है पूरा पड़ोस में को उन्हें दे दो तो सर खा लिए न बैठे हैं और साहब पूरे गांव में इतने बूढ़े बच्चे ऐसा घर पों को नहीं है कि ताम में बुखार नहीं है और प्राइवेट तो वो सरकारी तो लगे हैं बेचारे कितम अलग अलग पर प्राइवेट डॉक्टर के जहाँ जाते हैं वैसे डॉक्टर जा कब हजार ले तो कोई सात सौ को आठ सौ साहब गेहूँ काट के लाए कोई भिंड से लाओ कोई ग्वालियर से लाओ काट के वो भी बेच दे मणमोड़ी ने कछू ना आना साहब हम बहुत परेशान है नाज पानी करो तो सब बेच गाँव हम है और मेन तो मजदूरी करते हैं जंगल से जड़ा बूटी ले आ दे तो बानी बेच पा रही हम आई है और डंडा घर रहे पुलिस लगा रही हमें डंडा हम कितना मर जा जाओ तो हम तो परेशान हो गए मोड़ी मोड़ा बुखार ताम में डरे पैसा हाथे से सब लगा लगी था हम लोग ने तो मजदूरी क्या है हम गुलाब रानी बोल रहे हमें राशन नहीं मिले ना काट दो अब हम परेशान हैं बस जोर के और वो खास चढ़ा रहा है सो दबा पैसा नहीं जानू कराए हैं हम लोग को बीमार तो हो चुका है थोड़ा सर्दी बुखार तो ना बड़ा बीमारी ने सर्दी बुखार है फ्रेंड्स ग्रीटिंग्स फ्रॉम इंडिया आई नो दिस इज अ टाइम व्हेन यू आर रिसीविंग many appeal many request for financial support because the world is fighting against covid-19 so i'm standing in front of you with some degree of hesitation that i'm also coming to you with an appeal for financial support but there is no option the crisis is so big that we'll be able to reach out to more people if we can get more support I am speaking to you on behalf of an organization called Ekta Parishad, and Ekta Parishad is a large organization working in ten states of India. And because of many years of experience, we are able to reach out to large number of people. And the strength of Ekta Parishad is that it has many activists in the field, many volunteers. many village level leaders and this is hard so credible in front of the government so we are able to net work with the government and try to reduce the pressure on the government we hum didiya sabhi is corona mahamari mein sabhi didiya milke hum ghar ghar ja kar gaon wale logo ko salah de rahe hain samjha rahe hain ki mask lagao do gaz duri raho और घर में ही रहो और वैक्सीन लगाओ साठ गांव 25 ग्राम पंचायतों में काम कर रहे हैं उन ग्राम पंचायतों में जो आदिवासी बाहुल क्षेत्र हैं वहां पर अनेक ग्रामों में लोग बीमार पड़े हुए हैं किसी को बुखार है किसी को खांसी है किसी को सर्दी है वहां पर वर्तमान में सर्रा प्राथमिक सर्रा स्वास्थ्य केंद्र में कोविड सेंटर स्थापित करवाया है जो शुक्रवार और सोमवार को वहां पर डॉक्टर आकर के बैठते हैं शासन ने हमारी बात सुनी और लोगों के हित के लिए वहां पर कोविड सेंटर इंजेक्शन लगाने का कार्यालय बनाया गया है rather than just sitting and waiting for somebody to come and help them so at this point we have divided our work into two long term and short term the long term will be more related to food employment poverty etc we will come to that later but what is immediate is dealing with health both preventive and curative 
छह फुट की दूरी रखें बनाए रखें किसी भी बीमारी के लक्षणों में सतर्कता बरते हाथ साफ रखे सैनिटाइजर का उपयोग करे जैसे किसी को हो भी गई तो एक दूसरे को परिवार में ना हो पाए इसलिए ए, परिवार से भी दूरी बना के रखें लुक वी नीड लार्ज नंबर मास्क इन लार्ज नंबर सैनिटाइजर ऑक्सीमीटर लाइफ सेविंग मेडिसिन आयुर्वेदा ड्रिंक्स to deal with cough and cold ambulances because people are to be transported from rural areas to to the hospitals oxygen cylinder bed sheets in isolation wards water supplies to villages because people should not assemble in one point etc etc it's a long list of activities that we need to undertake in a large area in india so in order to do that we need your support and the more support we receive we will be able to reach out to more people so let me thank you in advance for your support for your concern and we will get back to you as soon as we are able to deal with this crisis so that we can plan together for our next phase of action thank you very much Thank you. Thank you, Jin Majay. Um, we'll uh, turn the uh, program over now to Raja Ji. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Reva Ben. So first of all, let me let me thank. Um, Janam Jai, he just recovered from COVID, and he spent uh, all his time to make this film. And uh, thank you very much, Janam Jai, for doing that. Uh, this is the time for you to to recover and rest. So please do that. Uh, I'm also thankful to Gary for joining us today to translate. See, in our uh, in our uh, programs. Uh, we have a prayer you know in our training programs we have a prayer the four lines which says natoham kame rajyam na sargam na punarbhavam kame dukha taptanam praninam artinashnam it's a, it's a sanskrit prayer it says god almighty i am not asking for kingdom i am not asking for heaven i am not even asking for to be reborn rebirth but what i am asking is strength to care for the suffering people that's a spirit in which ekta parishad is working now that give us strength that so that we will be able to help the suffering people because there are too many the difference between what happened in 19 uh, 2020 and 21 the first phase and second phase is that the last time it was mainly in the cities and as you know cities have at least some hospitals and some possibilities now this is spreading into villages and that is the place where resources are very limited infrastructure is also very limited so it's a more demanding and challenging time than what was it one year back uh you can understand what ekta parishad is facing today that we are under pressure from government and also from the people because for government officials to reach out to people they need our support so in every vehicle there should be some volunteers to take them to the villages at the same time people are expecting us to be close to them because it is their organization and they need us so it's it's a huge pressure on ekta parishad and ekta parishad workers on one side we want to help the 
government and medical services on the other side we need to be with the people on a day to day basis because they need us uh as you know probably india has some 7 670 districts and we have started working only in 72 districts i mean there are many other organizations and ekta parishad and its sister organizations together are into 72 districts at the moment we are using the resources that are available i mean whatever savings we had we are using it up so in order to scale up our activity in order to expand our activity we need more support the more support we get the 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 uh, the greater the number of villages we will be able to cover so at this point i want to thank all of you all all of our friends uh, and well wishers who have contributed generously i am told that the the collection has already gone to 40000 dollar or above uh, i want to thank all of you for contributing and strengthening this process and i want to specially thank igint canada international gandhi institute for non violence and peace canada mahatma mahatma gandhi canadian foundation for world peace edmonton india canada society hamilton mahatma gandhi peace council and facilitators for social change and also dharma in motion so i want to thank every one of you because it is because because of your efforts uh, that we are able to continue to do our work in the field we don't have to worry about resources because we are working for it so i want to thank every one of you now i need to pass on this to shraddha a word about shraddha shraddha means devotion that is her name and she is vice president of uh, ekta parishad and she is also the coordinator of mahila manch ekta parishad mahila wing women's women's wing uh, she has worked for many years in madhya pradesh and in very difficult conditions in very difficult areas and she has received many awards including the rural women prize from geneva and there is also a film about shraddha that was made some 10 years back the title of the film was tu zinda hai that means the fire is still alive so she is an inspiration for many upcoming young leaders in this country so now shraddha is going to coordinate the rest of the program and invite people to speak shraddha thank you very much thank you very much to everyone thank you thank you raja ji thank you uh, hello everyone welcome to meeting jay jagat aap jai sabne jagat. jo jo samay diye aaj hamare beech mein hum ummeed kar rahe hain ek bada network banega इस कोरोना महामारी में आप सब का सहयोग और विश्वास से हम उन अंचित परिवार के सेहत सुरक्षा भय और भूख मिटाने में आप सबका सहयोग जो मिल रहा है अभी तक जो संसाधन जो मिला है उसका हम यूटिलाइज कर रहे हैं और इसके लिए आप हम बहुत बहुत आभारी हैं आप सभी जानते हैं कि कोविड 19 जो आया है पूरे देश में इससे हम पूरा जूझ रहे हैं भारत के संदर्भ में हम भारत के 80 प्रतिशत गाँव में के संदर्भ में मैं देखती हूँ तो पाती हूँ कि सबसे ज्यादा महिलाएं प्रभावित हो रही हैं। इस कोविड 19 जागरूकता अभियान का काम पिछले एक वर्ष से एकता परिषद एकता महिला मंच द्वारा गांव गांव में किया जा रहा है इसी बात को हम भारत के अलग अलग समुदाय अलग अलग कम्युनिटी के बीच में सोशल एक्टिविस्ट एक्टिविटी के माध्यम से हम उन गाँव की स्थिति के बारे में हम अभी बहुत सारे काम कर रहे हैं और आने वाले दिनों में आप सबके सहयोग से करना चाहते हैं तो मैं पुनः आप सभी का स्वागत करती हूँ अभिनंदन करती हूँ इस कार्यक्रम में और हम जानना चाहेंगे क्योंकि हमारे साथ बहुत सारे एक्सपीरियंस पर्सन हैं और एक्टिविस्ट हैं हमारे बीच में 
शोभा तिवारी है जो मध्य प्रदेश के छत्तीसगढ़ और के बॉर्डर में बैगाओ के बीच में काफी सालों से काम कर रही हैं बैगा कम्युनिटी जो है नेशनल पार्क रिजर्व फॉरेस्ट वाइल्ड लाइफ सेंचुरी के से प्रभावित कम्युनिटी है जिनके बीच में पिछले 25 सालों से शोभा बहन काम कर रही हैं तो मैं उनको आमंत्रित करती हूँ सबसे पहले जो अपने उस क्षेत्र की स्थिति के बारे में और अभी वो क्या कर रही हैं आने वाले दिनों में क्या करना चाहती हैं कोविड नाइन्टीन को लेकर तो मैं आग्रह करती हूँ शोभा बहन से वो अपनी बात को कहेंगे श्रद्धा ट्रांसलेशन आपका बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद friends for all of you who do not understand uh, hindi i am my name is nabil and i am going to try to translate what has been just said by uh, shraddha ben to start with shraddha ben said that we very humbly appreciate your uh, time and your concern for the covid 19 crisis in india and uh, we hope that with your support we'll be able to create a a worldwide support group for the people who are suffering out of covid 19 and and ensure that people do not die out of hunger and that people are able to reach the services the essential health services during these times of peril uh, friends our experience shows that women are the worst affected and uh, uh, we at ekta parishad and ekta mahila manch are trying to expand our outreach from 80 to uh, as many as possible uh, villages and districts so that women Uh, and children who are the worst affected may be aided in the best possible way uh, the money which has been contributed by all of you is being used 100% for the rehabilitation purpose and we shall keep on updating you on the progress uh, of how the work is going on here in india uh, with this i would like to invite shobha bahan to share her thoughts with you shobha bahan is uh, working in chatisgarh with the, the baga tribal group So now we should hear from Shobha Ben. सबको जय जगत मैं बैगा जनजाति जो पिछड़ी जनजाति में आते हैं और बैगा जनजाति सुदूर अंचल बिहार जंगलों के बीच में निवास करते हैं उनका जीवन पूरा ही जंगल आधारित रहा है जब से नेशनल पार्क बना सेंचुरी बना तो उनको पूरी सरकार ने जंगल से हटाना शुरू कर दिया जिसके चलते उनके हाथों से न तो जंगल उनके पास रहा न आधुनिक समाज उनके पास है अब सवाल लूटता है कि जिनके पास जंगल नहीं है तो स्वाभाविक है कि उनके हाथों से जंगल से संबंधित पौष्टिक आहार भी उनके हाथों से निकल जिससे वो कुपोषित होने लगे हैं वर्तमान में अब कुपोषण और कोरोना कोरोना जैसे महामारी से कुपोषित व्यक्ति के लिए लड़ना एक बहुत बड़ी एक चुनौती है जिससे लगता है कि गाँव में लोग ज्यादा बीमार पड़ रहे हैं और उनकी हालत खराब हो जाएगी क्योंकि जागरूकता की भी कमी है उन लोगों के अंदर में हालांकि उन लोगों ने अपनी अपना इलाज कोरोना का इलाज उन लोग जड़ी बूटी बूटी के माध्यम से तो कर ही रहे हैं लेकिन हम लोग भी अभी स्वास्थ्य विभाग से मिलकर के गांव गांव जा रहे हैं गांव गांव में उन लोगों को तो दवाई पहुंचाना सलाह देना काढ़ा के बारे में समझाना ये काम तो कर पा रहे हैं लेकिन ये संभव नहीं हो पा रहा है सभी गांव में पहुंच पाना क्योंकि तो हम किसी के साथ जा रहे हैं तो हम हर गांव में लोगों के पास बीमार लोगों के पास नहीं पहुंच पा रहे हैं तो हमको लगता है कि अगर हम किसी भी अपनी संसाधन से जाते हैं क्योंकि तो यहां से फील्ड की दूरी गांव वालों की दूरी हॉस्पिटल से अस्सी नब्बे किलोमीटर है तो जो बीमार व्यक्ति वो हॉस्पिटल तक नहीं आ पा रहे हैं और डॉक्टर जो है वो हॉस्पिटल छोड़ के गांव तक नहीं पहुंच पा रहे हैं तो हम कैसे बीच में एक कड़ी का काम कर सकते हैं अभी तो उनके साथ मिल करके हम लोग कर ही रहे हैं लेकिन हमारे पास एक गाड़ी होती ताकि हम गांव के लोगों को हम थोड़ा दवाई कम्बल बेडशीट और अन्य राहत सामग्री तक पहुँचा सकते और बहुत ही सीरियस लोगों को वहां से उठा करके हम हॉस्पिटल तक लेके आ सकते हैं ताकि वो कोरोना जैसे महामारी से अपनी जान को बचा पाए और खुश रहें तो मैं मुझे इतना ही कहना था बस जय जगत जय जगत थैंक यू थैंक यू शोभा थैंक यू सो मच शोभा बहन फ्रेंड्स प्लीज अलाउ मी टू शेयर विद यू व्हाट हैज बीन शेयर्ड बाय शोभा बहन शोभा बहन प्राइमरीली वर्क्स विद द बैगा tribal group 
which is historically known to be a group that belongs to the forest. Uh, over the year, there has been a major conflict regarding the forest and the eviction of the Bagas due to uh, the national parks establishment. So now the Bagas are actually in a fix. Neither have they, neither do they belong completely to the villages and neither do they have outreach to the cities. Uh, needless to say that in such a situation, malnutrition strikes very hard and as, and as, if you, and as you know, COVID-19 asks for very healthy bodies and nutritioned people, which is uh, completely under siege. Uh, there's a lot of work happening at the ground level where we are being trying to educate people on the local health traditions and the Ayurveda and uh, the local medicines. But uh, one of the challenges that we are facing is that of outreach. In these times of uh, COVID-19, people are not very comfortable to commute. And we need support for uh, com commuting to village to village with the relief material to get the grains, get the blankets, get the medicines to the people. So our dire need as of now is support for mobility and and commuting. Thank you very much. That was what was said by Shobha Behan. Thank you. So, yeah. Thank you. Okay. हमारे बीच में जो है बिहार जो उत्तर पूर्व भारत के उत्तर पूर्व दिशा में है और बिहार से मंजू डुंगडुंग है जो पिछले 25 सालों से मुसहर कम्युनिटी के बीच में काम कर रही है मुसहर कम्युनिटी जो है समाज के सबसे निचले पायदान पर है जो गांव के बाहर बसाहट उनकी रहती है और लैंडलेस है इन इन समुदायों के बीच में लगातार मंजू बहन काम कर रही है महिलाओं के बीच में काम कर रही है तो मैं उनसे अनुरोध करती हूं कि वो अपने बिहार के संदर्भ में अपनी बात को रखेंगे फ्रेंड्स वी शुड नाउ हियर फ्रॉम मंजू बहन मंजू बहन बेसिकली कम्स फ्रॉम बिहार व्हिच एज यू सी ऑन योर स्क्रीन इज दिस पार्ट लेट मी जस्ट हाईलाइट इट फॉर यू फॉर बेटर अंडरस्टैंडिंग Uh, Bihar in India is where uh, Manju Bahan is, and she basically works with the Musahar uh, community. This is the place in India, if you see on the map, the Bihar. She works with the Musahar community. The Musahars are known to be one of the most socially excluded groups in India, and uh, they, uh, as far as livelihood, they they. They suffer from critical loss of land and ownership over land. And uh, Manju has been working with them for almost 25 years. So now we invite Manju to come and share her thoughts. Hello. Yeah, Manju Bahan, aap apne aap ko unmute kar lein, please. मंजू बहन अगर आप तक हमारी आवाज पहुंच रही है तो अपने आप को अनम्यूट करें मंजू दीदी आपको मंजू बहन आप आप म्यूट आप म्यूट हैं देखिए आपको मोबाइल में नीचे माइक का एक बटन दिखेगा उसको दबाइए तो आप अनम्यूट हो जाएंगी मंजू बहन मैंने आपको यहाँ से अनम्यूट करने की रिक्वेस्ट भेजी है आपकी स्क्रीन पे आएगी उस पर यस पे क्लिक कर दीजिएगा अनम्यूट पे क्लिक कर दीजिएगा हो गया जी हाँ। जी मंजू बहन सामान्य जील कर हैरिस बहन जो कि अंतरराष्ट्रीय स्तर पर महिलाओं को लगातार आगे ले जाने का काम कर रही है कनाडा से रीवा बहन अनुज भाई और उपस्थित और अन्य बहन भी होंगे जो कनाडा से अन्य जगह से होंगे और सभी उपस्थित हमारे एकता परिषद के वरिष्ठ साथियों और 
सभी साथीगण आप सभी का मैं हार्दिक अभिनंदन करती हूँ मैं बिहार राज्य में मुसर दलित और वंचित वर्ग के बारे में बात कर रही हूँ मुसर भूमिहीन लोग हैं ये लोग मजदूरी कर अपना आजीविका चलाते हैं ये लोग काम के लिए बाहर गए अपना राज्य से दूसरे राज्य जगह से और लौटे तो अपने साथ बीमारी को भी साथ लेकर आए इस वैश्विक महामारी के क्रम में मैंने अभी तक पटना और दानापुर आसपास के करीब साढ़े तीन हजार परिवार से मिला जिसमें महिला महिला ये और जो घरेलू काम से जुड़ी हुई है सब सुथरा से लेकर अनेक तरह के छोटे बड़े काम करते हैं दुकान वगैरह चलाते हैं अब उन्हें काम पर आने के लिए मालकिन मालिक लोग इजाजत नहीं देते हैं क्योंकि बीमारी तो है ही लेकिन आज काम अब लोग भय भी है और भूख की भी समस्या से लोग काफी परेशान हैं ज्यादा बीमारी की हालत में उन्हें हॉस्पिटल तक वॉलेंटियर पहुंचा रहे हैं स्थानीय स्तर पर जो कि काढ़ा और गरम पानी दूध हल्दी इत्यादि का सेवन कर के लोग चल रहे हैं अभी तक बिहार झारखंड के लगभग दस जिला तक वॉलेंटियर के सहयोग से पहुंच बनाने का काम किया है और अभी खास करके हम लोग देखेंगे तो अभी प्रवासी मजदूर लगभग 2530 हजार पांच और सिंगल का बात करेंगे तो एक हजार दो सौ अस्सी लोग टोटल वृद्ध दिव्यांग तेरह सौ चालीस और ट्रांसजेंडर फोर्टी फाइव कुल मिलाकर हमारे पास में बिहार झारखंड पांच हजार छह सौ पंचानबे ऐसे परिवार हैं जिनके पास तत्काल खाने के लिए भोजन जैसे सूखा हो या चावल दाल जो भी मिले बच्चों के लिए बिस्कुट मास्क सैनिटाइजर पारा सेटामोल थर्मामीटर ऑक्सीमीटर इत्यादि अगर हो तो कुछ अच्छा ये हो सकता है और इनको भी जो कर्ज करता वॉलेंटियर है जाने के लिए भी काफी दिक्कत है अगर तो व्यवस्था हो तो हम लोग एक टीम के रूप में उसको काम कर सकते हैं पीड़ितों तक पहुंच बना सकते हैं और इनके बीच जो भय है आशंकाए हैं और मेडिकल सुविधा जो भी सुविधा है इन्हें हम लोग जागरूक और साहस और हिम्मत बढ़ाकर उनको एक आतंबल देकर एक सामान्य स्थिति में लाने के लिए काम कर सकते हैं इस तरह से मैं उम्मीद और आशा के साथ में आप सभी अंतरराष्ट्रीय भाई बहनों के बीच में बात को रख करके मैं इतना ही बात में समाप्त करती हूँ थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू मंजू बहन गरी भाई थैंक यू मंजू बहन आपका बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद friends manju bahan started by greeting all of you who have joined from around the world to support the rural communities of india uh, musahas are the landless people and who uh, largely depend on manual labor for uh, their uh, livelihood manual labor basically means unskilled labor day day based labor which is not fixed one day you may have work the second day you may have no work and you may in many cases go hungry so uh, while this lockdown happened in india while people migrated back from cities to uh, back to their villages what also migrated back along with them was the disease of covid 19 uh, manju says that we have been working with over 3500 uh, people in total and what we notice as that due to covid due to covid there these communities have no work and there, there are two reasons behind this one being that uh, there is no business anymore at the local level two being the fear of covid because of which people are not hiring local resources uh manju also shared that we are also trying to reach 5000 families uh, who need support for food uh, and basic health establishment at at village level which includes oximeters thermometers uh, nutritional kits dry ration and so on but 
what is barring us is is the great problem of 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 stocking this and getting the resources for uh, reaching all these 5000 people and also of course the problem of commuting because the villages are at large distances there are no roads uh, private uh, and public transportation is not working so all your support that can come in to help this community in these very very hard times is most welcome we look towards your your generous support thank you very much Shraddha Ben, um, Shraddha Ben, you have mic mute. And uh, Shraddha Ben? Oh. There seems to be a network problem with Shraddha Bhan. Ji, ji, ji. Ji, Shraddha Bhan. Boli. Ji. Ah, I want to know what is Kasturi Bhan? Ji, ji. Ah. Ah. So, thank you, Manju Bhan. Ah, Kasturi Bhan, I am Amrit Karti. Kasturi Bhan, who is Madhya Pradesh, ke uttar Bundelkhand, Bagelkhand, ka jo uttar Bharat ka area hai, uttar Pradesh se jura hua hai. और कस्तूरी बहन काफी एक्सपीरियंस पर्सन है जो चीन ब्रिजिंग के वर्ल्ड वुमेन सेमिनार में भी अटेंड किया किया है उन्होंने और दलित बेल्ट में काम कर रही है जो कि लैंडलेस परिवार है माइग्रेट एरिया में काम कर रही है तो मैं उनसे आग्रह करती हूं कि वो अपनी बात को कहेंगे महिलाओं के संदर्भ में अभी हमारे दिन में क्या करने वाले हैं कोविड 19 को लेकर कस्तूरी बहन so, uh, friends, we will now we will now hear from Kasturi Behen. Kasturi Behen, as I showed you on the map, worked in the Bundelkhand region. Uh, I'll, I'll again highlight it for you to understand it better. Uh, she works in the Bundelkhand region, which coincides between Madhya Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh, as you see on your screen. And she basically works with the Dalits. Uh, the Dalits are known as the backward class in India. The Dalits and landless labor. So now we shall hear from uh, uh, Kasturi Behan about her experiences and uh, how is the combating with COVID going on. I have all the people from the Jai Jagat, the साथियों बुंदेलखंड बघेलखंड क्षेत्र में दलित समुदाय के लोग बड़े पैमाने पे हैं और इन समूहों का राजा महाराजों के जमाने से इनका शोषण होते चला आ रहा है अभी भी उच्च समाज के लोग भी उनका बड़े पैमाने पे शोषण करते हैं उनकी बड़े पैमाने पे जमीनें छिन गई हैं जो छोटा-छोटा उनके हाथ में जो जमीन है वो अपना उसी से अपना खेती वेच का काम करते हैं भरण पोषण का काम करते हैं जब उससे उनका काम नहीं चलता तो वो बड़े पैमाने पे बुंदेलखंड वगैरह से पलायन करके दिल्ली है बंबई है गुजरात है जो बड़े-बड़े शहर हैं वहाँ चले जाते हैं काम की तलाश में अभी ये कोविड महामारी में बड़े पैमाने पे लोग वापस आए हैं घर वापस आए हैं और बीमारियों से जूझ रहे हैं बाइगले बुखार चढ़ रही है लोगों को किसी को कोरोना हो गया है उनके हाथ में कुछ खाने के लिए नहीं है वो भूखमरी की कगार पे खड़े हैं जहां काम करने गए तो वहां भी कुछ नहीं मिला कुछ लोग पैदल चल के भी अपने घर वापस आए हैं यहां भी कुछ काम नहीं है उन लोगों को और वैसे ही महामारी के चपेट में है कोई लोग कुछ लोग अस्पतालों में हैं कुछ लोग घर में बुखार में पीड़ित हैं तो ये महामारी में लोग बहुत संकट का सामना कर रहे बहुत संकट में लोग हैं और इनका कभी न्याय नहीं मिला ये राजों की गुलामी से हमेशा ही गुलाम रहे हैं और अभी भी इनको कोई न्याय नहीं मिलता अछूत के नाम से लोग इनको भगा देते हैं कि तुम तो दलित हो कहीं कुछ कर रहे सब बहुत सारा अपमान लोग करते हैं अभी भी उनको कोई ऐसा न्याय नहीं मिलता तो मैं हम लोग मिलके मध्य प्रदेश हम लोग पूरे बुंदेलखंड वगैरह खंड के जो लोग हैं 
अभी हम लोग तेरह जिला इक्कीस ब्लॉक में पूरा काम के लिए सोचे हैं कि सरकार के साथ संगठन और हमारे जो लोग हैं उनके साथ मिलके किस तरीके से ये महामारी से हम लोग निपट सकें और मिलके काम करें जिसमें से बहुत अच्छा काम होगा और लोगों को राहत मिलेगी तो और एक तो लोगों के पास अभी तत्काल कुछ ऐसा खाने के लिए भी व्यवस्था नहीं है अगर कुछ अपना कुछ जुटाते भी है तो लॉकडाउन से चलते वो लेने के लिए कहीं मिले ही नहीं रहा कहीं पुलिस परेशान कर रही कहीं कुछ परेशान कर लोग एक भुखमरी की कगार पे खड़े हैं एक तो वापस आए वहां भी कुछ नहीं मिला उनको यहाँ भी कुछ काम भी नहीं मिल रहा है सब अपने अपने घरों में बैठे हैं पीड़ित हैं बीमार हैं तो मैं तो ये कहूंगी कि हमारी टीम से कि हम मिल यूरोप के साथ ही भारत के साथ ही मिल कैसे ये महामारी से हम लोग जूझ निपट सके सरकार के साथ और जितने स्वास्थ्य कर्मी है स्वास्थ्य विभाग के साथ सामाजिक क्षेत्र के लोग स्वास्थ्य विभाग के लोग मिलकर हम लोग एक अच्छा काम कर सकें और ये महामारी से निपट सकें तो मैं अभी अपनी बात यहीं समाप्त करती हूँ जय जगत जय जगत थैंक यू बहुत धन्यवाद कस्तूरी बहन कस्तूरी बहन एज आई टोल्ड यू प्री डोमिनेटली वर्क इन द बघेलखंड एंड बुंदेलखंड रीजन ऑफ मध्य प्रदेश एंड उत्तर प्रदेश now these regions uh, have a history of being uh, ruled by princely uh, uh, the, the princely states as a result of which the communities which come from the backward classes have been exploited to to un, unexplainable levels one such small example is is the rampant spread of uh, land grabbing Uh, due to non availability of land and whatever land they have the the situation of drought year after year this community is forced to migrate to the cities now when the lockdown happened uh, people have now returned to home many of them have returned with the uh, with the disease along with it now they have come with 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 no payments they were not made any payments when they were coming back home so now they struggle for food and they struggle for treatment services they struggle for day to day expenses so uh, kasturi says that we are trying to uh, 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 we are trying to increase our outreach to 13 districts and 21 blocks in 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 the baghelkhand bundelkhand region where primarily what we are trying to do is to network with the government and to work at community level to uh, <clears throat> to look for ways for people to reach services but what is needed uh, urgently uh, where you all come into the picture mm-hmm. is to help us uh, provide food to these families who do not have any money with them we need your help in in establishing basic uh, health services uh, at the village level we uh, uh, we also need your help in 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 helping these community help themselves by becoming self reliant at the community level so in the due course when we receive your support we will try to work more closely with these communities and and keep on updating you thank you very much thank you kasturi thank you thank you kasturi ben theek hai didi आ, अगले श्रृंखला में मैं मध्य प्रदेश का ही एक बड़ा हिस्सा है चंबल का हिस्सा जो राजस्थान से जुड़ा हुआ है वहां से वहां सहरिया कम्युनिटी है जो काफी गरीब है पुअर है उनके बीच में शबनम अफगानी काम कर रही है तो मैं उनसे निवेदन करती हूँ कि शबनम बहन वहां के संदर्भ में अपनी बात को कहेंगे कि हम अभी क्या कर रहे हैं और आने वाले दिनों में क्या करने तैयारी है हमारी शबनम में हेलो हाँ जय जगत सभी को आदरणीय मंच मेरे को महिला मंच पे आज अपने अनुभवों को साझा करने का मौका मिला है मैं अपने चंबल क्षेत्र की सभी महिलाओं की ओर से धन्यवाद करती हूँ कि आज यहाँ पर मुझे अपनी बात को कहने का मौका मिल रहा है और खासकर ऐसे मंच पर जहाँ पर हम एक सोच बना रहे हैं कोरोना महामारी के बीच में तो अभी तक के हम लोगों के अनुभव मैं आप लोगों के साथ साझा करना चाहूंगी जिसमें अभी एकता परिषद 
के साथ में हम एक सब एक साथ अपने हमारे यहाँ पर चंबल क्षेत्र के शोपुर उसमें अगर हम देखें तो अभी शासन के साथ हम लोग जो मिलकर काम कर रहे हैं यहाँ पर वो उसमें बढ़ चढ़ के महिलाओं ने जो भाग दिया है अभी किल कोरोना अभियान के माध्यम से समुदाय तक हम लोग पहुंच बना रहे हैं इसमें महिलाओं के साथ में स्वास्थ्य चेकअप किया जा रहा है दवाइयाँ दी जा रही है उनको गंभीर रूप से बीमारों को जिला अस्पताल तक भेजा जा रहा है पॉजिटिव मरीजों को आइसोलेशन केंद्र में भी भेजा जा रहा है हमारी यहाँ पर प्रत्येक टीम बनाई हुई है उस प्रत्येक ब्लॉक में टीम बनी हुई है तो टीम के लिए हम लोगों ने अभी 20 दिन के लिए वाहन उपलब्ध करवाया है उस वाहन में हम लोगों ने सैनिटाइजर मास्क साबुन पा, पीने के लिए पानी आदि का उपलब्धता दी है इन सब की उपलब्धता को सुनिश्चित करने के लिए शासन है सबसे बड़ा पार्ट आया है इसमें की शासन जानता है कि एकता परिषद हमारा समुदाय से जुड़ा हुआ है और समुदाय से मिलकर काम करता है और समुदाय को समझाने में समुदाय बात मानता है इसमें बहुत बड़ी भूमिका निकल के आ रही है अभी गांव गांव में अगर हम दे, देखे देखेंगे तो हमारे पुरुष साथी महिला साथियों ने बहुत बढ़ चढ़ के भाग दिया है ग्रामीण जनों को वो कोरोना टीका लगवा रही है वैक्सीनेशन लगवा रही है मास्क सैनिटाइजर का प्रयोग बता रही है सोशल डिस्टेंस का वो पालन करवा रही है तो ये चीजें अभी हम लोगों को देखने में मिल रही है ये हमारा समुदाय किस तरह से बढ़ चढ़कर भाग ले रहा है वो भाग नहीं रहा है इन चीजों से लेकिन वो शासन के साथ लगातार जुड़ा हुआ है जबकि वो भी कहीं ना कहीं पलायन से आया है कहीं ना कहीं दूर दराज से आया है जबकि उसके पास अभी रोजगार भी नहीं है लेकिन फिर भी वो कह रहा है कि इस महामारी में हम आपके साथ लगातार खड़े रहेंगे और शासन ने एकता परिषद से स्पष्ट मांग किया है कि आप हमारा साथ दें आप हमारे संग चलें तो इसीलिए शोपुर जिले में अभी देखा है चंबल क्षेत्र में जो हम काम कर रहे हैं शासन के साथ लगातार हम लोग मिलकर काम कर रहे हैं प्रत्येक पंचायत पर हम लोग ऑक्सीमीटर थर्मामीटर भाप केंद्र सुविधा शासन के साथ में समन्वय बनाने का हम काम कर रहे हैं पूरी टीम को भी हम लोगों ने भी आवश्यक कोविड सामग्री उपलब्ध करवाई है इसके दौरान अगर हम देखें तो अगर हम आवश्यकता की हम बात करते हैं तो अभी आवश्यकता में सबसे बड़ा जो पार्ट आ रहा है अगर कोरोना के बाद हम देखते हैं तो पोषण का देखने को मिलेगा कि शोपुर हमारा चंबल क्षेत्र वैसे ही पोषण के स्तर पर हम लोग देखा जाए तो पहले से ही कमजोर था और अभी इसका बच्चों पर और महिलाओं पर काफी प्रभाव पड़ने वाला है तो इसलिए अगर अपने आवश्यकता की जहाँ बात पड़ती है हमारी महिलाओं के लिए धात्री महिला गर्भवती महिला छह से बाईस माह तक के बच्चों के लिए हम लोगों को पोषण आहार की आवश्यकता है बड़े स्तर पर हम लोगों को मास्क की आवश्यकता है भी बच्चों के लिए पूरा आहार की व्यवस्था है गांव स्तर पर हम लोग रसोई बना सकें ताकि उसमें जहां कोरोना मरीज निकल रहा है उनके लिए उन पेशेंट्स के लिए हम उस मरीज उस महिलाएं हमारी वहां काम करें उनके माध्यम से ही हम लोग भोजन व्यवस्था भी वहां करवा सकें निःशुल्क हम लोग मास्क दें साबुन किट वगैरह भी दे सकते हैं सभी महिलाओं को अभी जब यहाँ देखने को मिल रहा है शोपुर में ज्यादातर अनुभव के तौर पर निकल के आ रहा है कि अभी यहाँ पर वाहन की बहुत आवश्यकता है महिलाओं को ले जाने में लाने में भी दिक्कत हो रही है गर्भवती महिला है तो उसको हॉस्पिटल तक ले जाने में दिक्कत हो रही है तो इसके लिए एम्बुलेंस की अभी उपलब्धता चाहिए क्वारंटाइन सेंटर है पर पंचायत स्तर पर क्वारंटाइन सेंटरों के लिए अभी हम लोग शासन के साथ में समन्वय मिलकर काम कर रहे हैं इसलिए वहां पर बेडशीट का होना पलंग का होना सैनिटाइजर किट का होना साफ सफाई के लिए तो ये सब चीजों की भी वहाँ बड़ी लार्ज स्तर पर यहाँ पर आवश्यकता निकल कर आ रही है हम एकता मन से जब बात कर रहे हैं महिला मन से तो ये चीजों का उपलब्धता यहाँ पर सुनिश्चित हो इसकी हम लोग आशा करते हैं धन्यवाद थैंक यू शब्द फ्रेंड्स शबनम बेसिकली वर्क्स इन द चंबल रीजन ऑफ मध्य प्रदेश एंड राजस्थान विच आई ऑलरेडी शोर यू ऑन द मैप नाउ दिस रीजन इज टिपिकली नोन फॉर द हैबिटेशन ऑफ द सहरिया ग्रुप सहरिया इज वन ऑफ द टॉप प्रायोरिटी ग्रुप्स ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया एंड हैज बीन नोटिफाइड एज द पर्टिकुलरली वलनरेबल ट्राइबल ग्रुप this is one of the most uh, uh, most poverty struck community uh, not only in madhya pradesh but but all over india now shabnam brings uh, with her some experiences where uh, under the kill corona campaign which has been launched uh, by the government of madhya pradesh uh, uh, there have been some success stories where the government has been working in very close collaboration with ekta parishad and focusing on women through uh, helping them outreach check up helping women reach our isolation centers uh, providing them medicines masks sanitizers and uh, so on uh, one of the success that ekta parishad uh, uh, 
uh, or uh, I may say one of the advantages that Ekta Parishad has in this region is that uh, due to its network and, and long, long presence in this area, Ekta Parishad is almost at household level. And this is, uh, this is very well known by the government and they are approaching Ekta Parishad for support and outreach to the community. Now, uh, during this uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic and lockdown, what we see as a rising trend is a threat to the nutrition of especially pregnant and lactating mothers, as well as children who are under 22 months of age. So uh, what we essentially need right now is to look for ways of how can nutrition reach this population and the child mortality and the maternal mortality being, uh, be arrested. Because this region, if you check on the internet, you will find is known for its infant mortality rate and uh, mother mortality rate. Uh, what we also need support for is uh, basically the isolation center. The isolation center is one place within the village or within the block or within the district where, uh, where patients who are not very serious but mild and moderate can be kept uh, away from their families so that they can recover and not transmit the virus. So this is one very urgent need we need right now because as you know indian villages have very small houses it's not possible for people to live in the same house and have two different rooms so people need place to stay and recover so that is what has been shared by shabnam man thank you very much friends uh, i'm going to sorry i'm going to break in now because i think we're we're running a little bit late um what i'd like to do is turn it over to jill for uh just a couple of minutes and then um we'll have one quick uh musical uh piece uh during which we'll uh look at some of the questions that have come in and if there are other questions we will bring those there are a few other people who who do have information to share so if if uh we uh have more time we will do that after so with that jill let me turn it to you thank you jai jagat sablo ko okay. yeah Thank you to the speakers for these excellent presentations. You know, so many of these women, Shraddha, Shobha Ben, Manju Ben, Kasturi, Shabnam, I've had the privilege to work with for quite a long time. And they really uh, have demonstrated so much leadership in villages. And this is why we wanted to bring them to your attention today. I think what they do is provide us with a worm's eye view of the situation. And through the media, uh, we tend to get bird's eye view. Uh, so it's, it's really wonderful uh, to get their view. Um, as they have spoken about the women frontline workers and how with the right inputs, they can support the community in better ways, I think calls us all to action. This is a call to action. And what is so amazing is that in the last three weeks, uh, so many people have come together in this campaign to get the word out. And as has been said by Reva, uh, ben and Anuj by $42,143 has been raised. And this is all by word of mouth. And this is all done by individuals like those listening today or being part of this webinar today and many others, about 200 plus small donors. So I think what we draw out of today is that when we come together, small contributions can make an impact. And I believe that these women and the constituencies that we're talking about today can really benefit from our coming together and making that small contribution. Today, we have enough money for 25 districts uh, um, Ekta Parishad, as Rajaji has said, Rajgopal has said, uh, works in 72 districts. So I'm hoping all of us 
can think about mobilizing friends and family to contribute to this uh, uh, fund through IGINP and through the various Gandhian organizations. So please uh, 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 stay with us, be in solidarity, and uh, let us see if rather than just uh, investing in uh, health and medical, we can also invest in people and see some change in this pandemic crisis in India. Thank you very much and Jai Jagat to all. Thank you, Jill. Um, John Majid, do we have one uh, musical piece that you can play? Thank you. Thank you so much, Jen Maje. Um, I wanted to start with some of the questions now, I think. And, and the first one that came in was from our friends from Switzerland about how many people we're trying to reach through this campaign. Um, I'm uh, just as a, a starting point, let me say, as, as Jill said, with the 42,000 we have now, what we have is about uh, one lakh, that's 100,000 rupees, per uh, uh, district for 25 districts. What um, we have been talking about is the 72 districts in which um, Ekta Parishad is working. But I wonder if I could call on, uh, is, is Ran Singhji here with us? Uh, if, he may, if he might want to uh, say a little bit more about that work or maybe Rajaji, if one of you would Ramesh, like to... Ramesh Bhai is there. Okay, Ramesh Bhai. Call on, call on Ramesh Bhai, yeah. Okay, Ramesh Bhai, do you want to talk a little bit about that, about the work in the different districts and, and how that money uh, might be used and how many people we might be reaching through those 72 districts? Right, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, so uh, in, in 72 districts, uh, I mean, first you have to know that these districts are uh, from the different, different geocultural zones. Some are on the coastline, some are in the mountains. Uh, some areas which is in the desert area, some are like a, a very hard dry land area. And uh, uh, in these particular districts, in out of the uh, 72 districts, we are close to uh, target to reach out to a kind of a, a 100,000 families. So, and that's exactly the number which actually we have reached out last year during the COVID relief operation. So largely we are focusing among uh, those people who are like an indigenous community from Dalit community, fisher folks, uh, nomads, single women, et cetera. So uh, close to 100,000 families, it's our, it's our larger focus in these 72 districts. Thank you. Thank you for that, Ramesh Bhai. Um, Anuj Bhai, you, you were responding to some of the other questions earlier. Do you want to uh, pick those up and perhaps uh, get some of our friends from India to also uh, enter into that conversation? Sure. Um, Joita, I think, asked us, you know, what is the level of um, infection we are seeing in the villages and how are we responding to it? Um, so. I was just saying that uh, it's very hard to uh, to really you know pinpoint the actual data because it's really an emergent situation. In one area that we heard from Ran Singh Ji, um, and directly in the yesterday's briefing meeting we had with him, is roughly 30% positivity rate, which is not very different from the in the urban areas. Uh, but you know honestly, you know at this point in time, the the pandemic is spreading so fast, and the testing is so difficult to 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 know. Uh, we can't really pinpoint the exact numbers. Uh, so it's, it's a very emergent situation. That's, but we are, you know, as, as uh, one of the speakers said uh, to, uh, towards the end, uh, we are also looking for creating uh, isolation spaces uh, within the village community so that people who are infected and who may not be able to isolate within the home are able to do so safely. And in doing so, uh, one of the big needs that has emerged is safety and security of the volunteers themselves. They themselves need to be safe to be able to create these spaces. So, so that is one of the, the big needs that are emerging. Thank you, Reverend. Uh, Anuj Bhai, uh, a bit of information about very difficult area like Manipur will be of interest. 
because that is the border of um, uh, Myanmar and India, very difficult to reach. And then we, we are facing big challenge. So if uh, Ramesh could throw some light on what is happening in Manipur. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Raji. So uh, uh, friends, the Manipur, uh, the 70% population of Manipur is lives in four valley districts. And then the rest of the part is a kind of a mountains. And perhaps you know that this is the, this is the state which is known for uh, uh, a majority of indigenous population, uh, the Nagas and Cookies and some other, uh, some other groups who live there. Uh, there is no road access. Uh, uh, the highways are still under construction. Can, you can imagine after 70 years that highways are still uh, under the construction. There's no railway track. So you can only maximum to reach out by flight or, uh, or maybe sometime by road uh, in, in some uh, non-traditional uh, 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 routes. So uh, this particular state, uh, there is a large number of cases, it's now coming. Uh, and the positivity rate is actually growing up to, today I heard in, an, in the news, it comes to nearly 38%, which is really shocking. And this is a very important place because the population density is very high. So here we have already identified uh, eight primary health centers. Uh, we have already uh, kind of a few rounds of meetings with the health officials in these eight primary health centers. Uh, primarily, we are focusing uh, the deficit area because uh, the, there, are, uh, there, there is a shortage in terms of generic medicines, uh, precautionary medicines to give it to the people. In some places, there is a lack of medicine, especially after the post-vaccination cases. So we are helping the government to buy some medicines and to pull out in the government uh, uh, pool and so that they can uh, give it to the people. The second thing, which is a very uh, uh, problematic for Manipur, uh, there's no industry. So you can imagine that in the, in the coming days when the COVID patients, the number of COVID patients will increase, there will be certainly an issue of oxygen supplies. So here we are trying to buy some oxy concentrators so that at least we can give it to the primary health centers, maybe like four or five oxy concentrators to each primary health center so that at least they can serve the people who actually needed uh, uh, the oxygen support. So, and perhaps uh, the last thing, which is very interesting for Manipur, the Manipur is a, is a state which is known for uh, a kind of a uh, very strong women leadership. So. Uh, this is the one state where definitely we need a lot of support in terms of machines, in terms of oximeter and oxy concentrators, maybe mask, uh, maybe a few medicines, uh, maybe ambulance services, especially to reach out to the remote areas. Because uh, we have some vehicles, but we need fuel, we need driver, uh, or maybe we can get some money. We, if we have some money, probably we can hire some ambulance agency to provide the services, especially to the patients in the rural areas. So these are some uh, very specific demands coming from the Manipur. Manipur. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you so much, Ramesh. But one of the questions that I've uh, been asked actually uh, on email just now uh, is um, how this how how the money is actually getting to the people who need it. And let me just start an answer and then uh, invite uh, Rajaji uh, and uh, uh, Shraddha Ben perhaps to to uh, amplify it. Um, what we are doing um, in collecting this, this, these funds is to use IGINP Canada and Dharma in Motion as two organizations that are, are in North America to um, send the money directly to the Mahatma Gandhi Seva Ashram, which is part of the Ekta Parishad network and the money is going directly to all of these people that you are hearing from today and others like them who are working on the front lines. This is very different than something like the, a donation to the Red Cross, for example, where it would go to Red Cross India and then go through their networks. This is 
frontline on the ground. So as soon as, as the money arrives, it is uh, the, uh, the people in the communities are able to use it. So I wonder, um, Rajaji or Shraddhaban, if one of you would want to say a little bit more about that. See, uh, thank you, uh, Reva Ben. See, once the money comes to Gandhi Ashram, in fact, Gandhi Ashram is our coordination point for all COVID-related activities. And then in each state, we have one organizational base, you know, where the coordination takes place. For example, if it is Chhattisgarh, there's an organization called Prayog. Uh, if it is uh, uh, Bihar, we have another organization. So each organization takes responsibility because there are many volunteers, many activists in the field, and they all have demands. So once we get the money, we decide that what goes to different states and the state coordination point will decide what need to be done on a day to day basis. But then there are many things which we can procure from one point. For example, now uh, Ramesh is planning to buy medicine from one point and divide it into, into small kits and provide it to different states. Uh, same thing with food material. So at some point we buy things in bulk. In other places, the each state decides what kind of expenditure they need. Vehicle is a big demand now. Vehicle, we can't provide vehicle, but then we can provide some rent for hiring vehicles. And uh, so that is up to the the state coordination to decide how many vehicles, which direction it should go, how many villages it should reach out. In some cases, we are also taking some new volunteers to work with us. So we have to take care of their food and uh, other expenses. But all, that is only in places where we don't have enough volunteers. We hire new volunteers, uh, people who are trained by us some years back and are not directly uh, into activism, uh, but as farmers, they can come into come into our our fold to do the work now. So uh, that is how the money get used, and but the all the accounts are finally collected by uh, Gandhi Ashram. The the report is made there, and we have to submit everything to the government, and we also need to submit it to the charity commission. So all that is being done by uh, Gandhi Ashram. There is a very good team which has the capacity and uh, experience to deal with finances and the accounts and reporting, et cetera. Yeah. Thanks so much, Roger. I also just wanted to say, because uh, sometimes on this end, there's a question about overhead. Um, all of us who are collecting the funds on this end have made uh, a commitment to paying the overhead costs out of separate funds that we have as organizations or personally we will cover them. So all of the money that is being collected in the name of this uh, initiative will go directly to our, our uh, colleagues, friends, family in India. Um, I think there's just one uh, last thing that I have here, one last question, and, and that is about um, whether there are differences in terms of the needs in the rural areas versus the urban areas. Uh, and I wonder um, if uh, uh, Ramesh Bai, if you would like to respond Anish, to Anish could take it. Or Anish, Anish could take because it. Because Anish, Anish is more into I urban, urban area, yeah. Okay. All right, thanks. Anish Bhai, so the difference between the needs in urban areas and rural areas. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Robin. Yeah, it, it is there is a difference. Uh, the thing is that uh, uh, in the last few years, we are trying to create a link in between urban and rural. So the urban people are totally ready to work for uh, volunteer, and they are they are having many kind of skill, doctors, engineers, and multiple language, and they know well how uh, part of education part, uh, they are very, uh, promo uh, very highly educated people. So they are really helping into the rural COVID situation, how they can uh, know, do the relief activities together. Uh, it is also creating a really a real link in between urban and rural. So the need, the mainly in the cities, we are really trying to uh, take all these uh, needs online, WhatsApp, all social media through all this process. We are 
uh, there are many many uh, requirements uh, availability of hospital it's a kind of facilitation in which the urban people are doing the need is uh, mainly the transportation for ambulance and that kind of things and some times urban uh, hospital they are highly uh, paying you know taking money from the rural people we are trying to cross checking them and trying to make a, a small uh, concession on all, all those things so that kind of things we are kind of again facilitation and young people are really focusing on that to help rural people so not much money request we need more facility and we may need some more uh, kind of uh, young people we need a kind of a, uh, no a corona fellowship something like that they can at least survive uh, their needs that kind of part we are focusing and uh, apart from all that they are really trying to creating a uh, small kind of fundraising process that also we need some kind of documents creation videos a small uh, no cultural uh, kind of traditional songs they are making in a good way to spread awareness campaign in the rural part so partially they are volunteer but partially they need a kind of support for the technical and other part that's all thank you uh, so much can, can i just quickly sorry uh, just to uh, summarize what anish just to add uh the rural areas uh in in comparison to urban areas uh you know one of the key things is how do we uh, spread the word and create the trust between the people and the health system that trust has been broken uh, to a large extent so ekta parishad is able to mobilize at large numbers and help the administration to reach them and about vaccination about medication about testing everything else the second thing uh, that is very different uh, from urban area often is that uh, isolation you know it's very difficult uh, in rural areas and so how do we create the home based and and community based care and the third is transportation uh, we don't have health infrastructure in many other villages so how do we those people who are becoming critical how do we transport so we have some vehicles but we probably the demand is very high so either we hire them or are or we try to procure the new vehicles and that's the kind of big challenge it's a very emergent situation thank you thank you so much for that anuj bhai we're coming up to the end of our time here and so i want to just give uh, raja ji one more chance to say uh, something to the whole group uh, to um let us know a little bit uh, maybe to to give us some um inspiration as we go forward i thought you want to give that last minute to rand singh ji to say thank you to everyone because he's the president of uh, yeah, ekta yeah, parishad we're, we're not quite at the last minute though raja yeah. ji so you need to say something and then we'll we'll pass it over to ran singh ji <laughs> right uh, so a uh, great i think um, uh, as i as i began initially that um, it's very very nice to see that uh, all our friends are coming together you know ekta parishad was building a mass movement in india but was also building uh, solidarity groups across the world across the globe so this is very very important for an organization that uh, whenever there is a crisis in one country others are able to reach out today it can be india and tomorrow it can be some other country but this this possibility of uh, human kind coming together to help each other in at uh, at the time of crisis is a very 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 interesting thing and uh, like gandhi said uh, whenever we contemplate an action think of the poorest and weakest that is that is the lesson of uh, ekta parishad that uh, for us focusing on the poorest and weakest in the society is very very important and uh, all the resources that we mobilize uh, that we mobilized all these years and also the mob that we are going to mobilize in coming years will be really used for the weakest and poorest uh, in the in the society so i am very happy about this partnership and i hope we will be able we will get through this crisis and um, probably work towards building building a better society in the coming years yeah thank you
Thank you so much, Rataji. I don't know if Ran Singhji is actually here. Um, is he here? No, Reva, he's not there. He's not here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I don't okay. think Ran Singhji is here. So um, in his stead, let me just say thank you to everybody. Um, thank you for all of your support so far. Thank you for being with us this morning in Canada or in, in Western Canada, this afternoon in Eastern Canada, this evening in India. Um, thank you as well for continuing this work with us. Um, please do use your own platforms, your own networks to spread the word because as Jill said, this has really been an initiative that has been people to people. And that is the way that it will continue. Um, we have some uh, amazing, amazing folks who have, have come and joined us as part of this work. Um, and I want to uh, just say thank you to everyone who was involved today, uh, particularly to Shraddha Ben, uh, Shobha Ben, um, Kasturi Ben, um, who am I missing? Um, Angela. Manju Ben. And, and, and also to Anish Bhai, uh, Ramesh Bhai. Um, thank you, and, and uh, nearby Bai, who didn't actually get to say anything, but who was here and waiting for us um, to call on him, but who is always there to-, and, to Gary, and, and Gary Bai. Oh yes, I'm coming to him. <laughs> um, and I think in terms of, of, of talk about our, our backbone. Uh, our yes, backbone- two, two of them, yeah. In India is Gary Bai and, and uh, Jan Majay, our backbone in Canada is Annie and Salima. Um, uh, yeah. Thank you all of you for everything that you have done. Um, Jill, I think last word goes to you. Yeah, what can I say? I mean, this is uh, amazing to have so many people today, so much concern, so much solidarity. And uh, as bad as the Indian situation is, these moments give us hope that by connecting with people and working with people, we can overcome these difficulties. So thank you, thank you again. And Jai Jagat to everybody. Jai Jagat. Jai Jagat. Thank you. Jai Jagat. 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 Jai